Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and on today's Sound Iron session, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be composing in the style of, and today we're gonna be composing in the style of The Witch, which is a score by Mark Corvin, and it's just one of my favorite recent horror movies, as, as well as the score is one of my favorites. It's just what he did with very little instrumentation and how he made that score as scary as he did is just awesome. So I wanted to do something in the style of that. Uh, we're gonna be showing some of the instruments that I use, a lot of sound iron stuff. I also used a violin, cause I don't have a nickel harpa, so it's the closest thing I can get to sort of trying to capture that really uh, you know, eerie sort of ponticello string sound. And I also made my own instrument out of this. So I'll show you guys how I did that. And you'll also be able to download that instrument as well. So. Uh, something, you know, it's no GUI or nothing fancy, just if you guys want to play around with some cool stuff. So let's go ahead and check out the track and then we'll start breaking it down. So like I was saying, I used a violin to sort of supplement what would have been a nickel harpa part because I don't have that and a nickel harpa sort of, it's a lot different than a violin. It's similar because it's bowed in strings, but it doesn't have that sort of clicky sound because there's like buttons that, that uh, change the notes. But what I wanted to do was incorporate some real stringed instruments with some of the virtual instruments that we have. And all I really did was just kind of doing these really simple Just that sound that you get when you gently drag the bow on the string, it just, it, it has like a really eeriness to it, just kind of sort of near the bridge, you get this really cool, just delicate, but also a little bit, um, kind of an, a cool, dark, intriguing sound to it. So I wanted to incorporate that. I also did some percussion with this as well. So let's go ahead and uh, dive in and I'll start showing you guys what I did. So this is a demo that I was writing for our Wooden Tines library that we just came out with not that long ago. And one of the effects presets that I made was called Witch in the Woods, very inspired by the witch. So it kind of made me think, oh, it'd be kind of cool to do a track in the style of the witch. So let's just listen to just how this sounds by itself. You can see there's some mod wheel stuff going on. Because as it evolves, you'll see how it's slowly fading over to the other side because I have it set up to where there's some ambiences that creep in. And it's just kind of doing that throughout the track. It's just slowly kind of fading that in. And what's cool is that this is only one uh, one NKI, so you kind of get the best of like a few different sounds in one. And then the main thing I want to get into is some of these uh, violin instruments. So this is just all the strings by themselves. So I just kind of layered on a bunch of different strings and a lot of this stuff, except for these two, that I took the sample that I recorded and put it into contact. 
uh, did a little bit of tweaking to it and set it up to where I can sort of use it as a playable instrument. All right, so getting into some of the violin instruments that I recorded. So we have this, this track here. This is one of the sounds. I was just kind of trying to layer a bunch of different sounds together just to get this really clustery, eerie string sound. And then I'm adding this other string layer. And it's tuned a little bit more to the right, just kind of adding this little. And then this percussion. And this sound was just from me taking the violin and just kind of knocking my fingers on it in front of the mic just to get some other kind of percussive sounds out of the violin. And then these two tracks are, I, what I did is I took a sampled recording of the violin that just kind of goes for about a minute or so and mapped it in contact, spread it across the keyboard. And I have one NKI that's just like, pretty much just like a regular sound. And then this one below it is the same samples, but reversed. So it's, it, it, it's using the same exact sample, but it just sounds, uh, sounds pretty cool. So yeah, as you can see, there's no GUI or nothing. I just literally dropped the samples in contact, mapped it a little bit, and um, you know, did a little bit of tweaking under the hood just to get it usable. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's always fun when you can take your own samples and, and drop them and be able to play them on the keyboard. So, and if you guys wanna download this for free, the link will be in the description below. But uh, pretty much all I did with these two is I have one playing a higher note, just a G which was the sample that was recorded. And then I added, I dropped it down an octave and used the reverse samples. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then I wanted to add some other bowed sounds as well. So uh, you can see I was really going for a lot of those really droney, eerie string bowed sustain sounds. And then I have this other one from Frendo, which is a really cool library that I use all the time for more horror type stuff. Sounds kind of similar to the violin. I got these water harp sustains. Adding that very faint tension to it. And then I got these, these water harp perk sounds. And these are panned more to the right. And that's pretty much the end of the cue. And then Going into some of the other voice sounds that I have, I got these whispers from uh, Voices of Gaia. And she, the whisper sounds on here, every time I listen to them, they sound like this really eerie sort of like witch chant or something that could be used for something like that. So I use these sort of eerie whisper sounds. Jenga. But while that's going on, I also have these uh, women cluster oo sounds. And this is from Olympus Micro. This is the non-player version, but some of the effects presets on here were pretty much the sound that I was going for, so I used that one. So that's just more of like in the background introducing some more eerie voices, because if you listen to the witch score, there's a lot of 
uh, really cool string bowed sounds, but then there's also a lot of really interesting sort of witchy chants and that sort of thing. So in Requiem Choir, there are these really cool whisper chants, which is perfect for that sort of thing of if you were trying to uh, recreate the sound of this like group of witches from a coven or something doing these, um, you know, like some scary ass witch ritual, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I have these going on and then let's listen to these by themselves. And then this is some body percussion. People stomping. This is from Requiem Light 2. Now, let's listen to all of it in context. That sound, every time I hear that, it always makes me think of the witch because there's these really cool sort of uh, female dissonant sweep sounds, which is also in Requiem Light. Play that by itself. Pretty scary if used in this kind of context. So for the strings, I have them all going through a reverb. It's all going through Valhalla Shimmer. So that's it, normal. that space to it that I really like and then for the most part I didn't really get too crazy with a lot of stuff I mean you know some tracks I just did some subtractive EQ just to make it fit a little bit more um, when it comes to the actual mastering I got Golfoss which is just doing kind of the usual what I use it for just uh, using recover and tame just to kind of clear it clear up some of the more hidden frequencies and tame some of the ones that are a little bit more a uh, little bit more in your face and then I have the bias turned up which I believe takes some of the more recovered frequencies and boosts them a little bit more and then I brighten it a little bit and do a little bit of boosting which kind of uh, helps accentuate the low end uh, pretty much I just use it as a general like cleaning up tool I like to usually do that before anything and then I got the SSL G comp, which is just kind of taking the mix and squeezing it slightly. I got the attack around 30 and the release around one. And then I have the ratio on uh, a two to one ratio. And then those are sort of my general settings. And then I'll just go ahead and increase the threshold to where I'm kind of floating around maybe minus two dB or so. So just kind of lightly gripping the whole mix. And then after that, I just have Slate FGX on here, just kind of boosting it up, you know, to that level that I want. And, you know, for the most part with these settings, actually, I usually turn this off. I probably won't even tell a difference. Uh, usually I'll just use this for the limiter. Uh, I don't really generally touch these settings too much. And then I just kind of boost the gain. Um, sometimes I'll adjust the ITP a little bit. But uh, for the most part, this is kind of the general go-to settings that work for me and um yeah that's pretty much it writing in the style of the witch so this track was a lot of fun to write especially sort of recording an instrument that i'm not very good at i i suck at the violin but i mean uh one of the things that i wanted to show you guys in this video is always trying to bring in some sort of new element into your tracks whether it's an instrument you're familiar with or maybe an instrument you're not you know just always going out and picking up even, you know, a cheapy instrument, even if it's, you know, a $30 violin, you know, or, or buying a bow and bowing something you shouldn't. I think it just adds a little bit more you into the track. I mean, samples are great. You can manipulate them and do all kinds of stuff, but it's always about sort of creating something new or even taking a recorded sample of an instrument like that that you're not very good at 
and you know making your own samples out of it. There's there's a lot of fun things you can really do to sort of spice up the creative uh, the creative flow a little bit. So at the moment we're currently running our Black Friday sales, which are some of the biggest sales of the year. So you can save 30% off all the contact player libraries or 40% off all individual and non-player libraries. So this is store wide. So if there's anything that you've been eyeing throughout the year up until this point, now's the time to take action. So definitely check that out at soundiron.com. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. So thank you so much for watching and take care.